I'm Leticia Guzman. I'm from San Diego, California. I'm a U.S. citizen and I'm a border angel. Recently, the Border Angels team went to Tijuana as we heard news of a migrant shelter being closed down. We um, had heard about these news and we immediately went to the scene and we saw police in riot gear, Mexican federal police in riot gear, wanting to take people out of this shelter called Comun Comunidad Contra Viento y Marea. It's, it's a warehouse and it was opened up in the midst of Migrants refusing to move from the Benito Juarez Sport um, Center, that was a, the original place where a lot of most of the migrants were at when they arrived at Playas, they were moved to that specific location. So this warehouse was opened up and no one told them that they were going to be taken out by force um, that specific date. So when a bunch of riot police come out of nowhere, they were just kind of shunned and started calling out for help for different activists and then that's when the news reached the Border Angels and from there we decided to make the trip down to Tijuana. The activism that we were doing there is kind of just holding the space there until there was a clear explanation for what was happening and why they were going to be taken out by force. So originally what the um, Mexican Federal Police started saying is that they have an order to have an evacuation and they never provided a physical copy of that order. So as activists and as people that know that are connected with legal advisors, um, they told us that they cannot take us out until they provide a physical copy. They never did. And so we were we felt really strongly about giving these migrants some time to at least know where they're gonna go and give them options because it seemed like they was out of their choice to even go to any shelter. Originally, the Mexican Federal Police were going to take them out and then take them to the government-run shelter called El Bartal. They didn't really see the point to going all the way over there. It is about 50 minutes away from the border, so they thought that that would be a little harder to get their asylum process, process going, whereas the place that they were staying at is 10 minutes away from the border, which makes it so much easier for them to start their, their asylum process. I think that as activists, we just knew that it was so much bigger than us and that us being just a presence in that warehouse was so powerful because I honestly feel like if it wasn't for activists being there, they would have gotten taken out by force. They wouldn't have cared about what they'd say. You know, these individuals have already been so dehumanized and criminalized. So I think that even the Mexican Federal Police already have like a bad image of them and they wouldn't really have much empathy towards them. And I have all this privilege of just being an American citizen and just being present there. I know it's going to make a big difference and it did. As we saw there was a lot of media presence once you know Americans stepped into the scene I guess you could say. Once that happened there was a lot of people that were interested right away. Oh why is there a bunch of you know Americans here in Tijuana just occupying a warehouse that's it doesn't look all that great and it's you know it's kind of um, it's a ghetto neighborhood, so they were kind of like, why are we even, what, what's, the, what's going on? So then, that's what we wanted. You know, we want people to get attracted and we want people to see the situation. We want people to start asking questions. And then once they start asking, asking questions and they see that this is not right, what's going on, it's wrong. You know, they're escaping political persecution. I think us being a presence there was almost like a protection. They have rights, you know, it doesn't matter. They have rights, they're human beings and they serve basic human rights. So we were talking to them and we were really making them feel um, human. And so I think that from that whole experience, something that I really took home with me is that these individuals need more people to come and support and they need more people to be there for them because, you know, I think this is such a difficult time, especially in this era. It's so difficult to even talk about my migration without someone kind of calling something out or without be, having divided views. But I think that when it comes to this and then seeing the true difficult circumstances that people have to live in and they can't, they don't have any recourse. So it's, it's kind of like you have to understand, you're forced to see things as they are. I know that the whole um, process of the activism, I was actually for about a week. It wasn't actually until recently that they were um, they actually had the choice to pick a shelter of their choosing instead of going just to the government-run shelter. 
I think that just that was a win for us. You know, at least they were able to get to know where they were going in time and it wasn't just by force. They weren't thrown out by force. They walked out out of their own will. They were they felt prepared now to actually leave. And that was something that was so powerful to me because it projected people power. It was people power in action. You know, it might have not gone as viral on the internet or it might have not even reached the news here, but you know, I I saw how powerful it is to just have people together in a space. It proved a lot afterwards after, you know, that week of protests and them actually being relocated to a space where it's in humane conditions and it's closer to the border and it's it was a perfect space. It actually ended up being into a positive outcome. It wasn't a tragic just taking people out by force, pepper spraying them. It was more of just peaceful. It was a peaceful movement. And I think that that was something that you don't really see as often. You know, I think the, the police were just about to come in by force. They kept saying that, kept saying that and threatening and threatening just to get us out. We kept persisting and we were like, no, like we need more time to find a space for them. We all did a sit-in. They were about to come in and barge in, but we just sat in and we did, just did not react to their comments and their um, yes. accusations and their violent or their aggression. We just did not respond to it whatsoever. We were just not reacting. And that was like at least an hour of just silence. And that was, I think that was so powerful because you could feel the energy of people. You could feel just so much hope and so much energy and it ended up paying off. It ended up being something that was a positive experience. I think that was, you know, true activism.